If you're one of the shoppers that are looking for a mid-sized family sedan, it doesn't get much more iconic than a Toyota Camry. This nameplate has been in the States for well over 40 years. And in that time frame, this vehicle has also consistently been the top selling passenger car in America. Now for 2025, Toyota decided to go a little bit more bold for the ninth generation Camry with an all new design. And for the first time ever, you can now pair its hybrid powertrain with an all wheel drive system, which should appeal to a lot of people who live in those snow belt states. So this week we're actually out here in San Diego, California to finally get behind the wheel of this brand new 2025 Camry XSE. And the big question I want answered, has Toyota made enough changes to their bread and butter family sedan to keep consumers flocking to dealerships? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, I wanna interrupt this video for a brief announcement to give a shout out to today's sponsor. Now, most of you probably have known this, but I've been doing these YouTube videos for well over a decade. And while it pains me to admit this, I sadly don't have as much hair on my head as I did back in my early 20s. Now, this is where Keeps comes into play because they offer FDA approved hair loss treatment plans recommended by licensed medical professionals. Now, the other great thing about Keeps is they also offer two in one options to combine treatment plans to get even more effective results. Some of my favorites happen to be the thickening conditioner, the thickening shampoo, and of course, the thickening pomade. The pomade in general is what I use pretty much every day prior to shoots. These products are formulated to essentially make your thinning hair appear fuller, and they are designed and formulated by hair loss treatment experts. The other great thing about Keeps is because they are online, they offer 24 seven support and access to a licensed medical professional through your online portal. So what are you waiting for guys? Whether you're looking to prevent further hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or simply take better care of your hair, Keeps has you covered. So big thank you to Keeps for sponsoring this video and for the free product. And to get started on your special offer, be sure to go to www.keeps.com forward slash redline or simply click in the link in the description below. That's www.keeps.com forward slash redline. And now let's get back to the video. Now, a pretty bold decision that Toyota made for this all new ninth generation Camry was by going hybrid only. That's right, if you guys are looking for a base gas only four cylinder or V6, those engines are no longer on the menu because every Camry will essentially come standard with this powertrain here. This is the fifth generation of Toyota's hybrid synergy drive hybrid powertrain, which essentially blends a naturally aspirated two and a half liter dynamic force four cylinder with either two or three electric motors. So uh, this particular one that I'm showing you here is the front wheel drive model, which means we only have two electric motors at the front if you guys want all-wheel drive, which is new for 2025 with the hybrid option that adds a separate electric motor at the rear, giving it electronic on-demand all-wheel drive. The gas engine on its own makes around 184 horsepower or something like that. But when you combine it with the two electric motors, this front-wheel drive model that I'm showing you makes 225 horsepower. So that's up from the 208 in the previous generation Camry. If you guys go for all-wheel drive, it actually increases the output to 232 horsepower. So that's pretty good, actually. That's about 30 more horsepower versus the previous generation all-wheel drive Camry, which is only available with the naturally aspirated four cylinder. It all goes out through an electronic continuously variable transmission. And this particular one that I'm showing you here, being an XSE with front wheel drive is rated at a very impressive 48 in the city, 47 on the highway. This has roughly a 14 and a half gallon fuel tank. You're looking at around 550 miles of range on a full tank. Now, if you guys go for an LE Camry, you can get as much as 51 MPG combined, which is basically almost at the same level as a Prius. The least efficient Camry will be an XSE with all wheel drive, which drops the fuel economy down to 44 in the city and 43 on the highway. Uh, if you guys go for the one that has over 50 MPG, you could easily do over 600 miles of range, which again is amazing range. It's probably why so many people love going for a, a hybrid version of these internal combustion uh, vehicles. Now, in terms of performance, Toyota doesn't quote a zero to 60 time, but we'll get it out here uh, on, our, on the road and see what we can actually get in the real world here in Southern California. And in terms of uh, the top speed, this should have a top speed around 130 miles an hour. As this car sits, it actually weighs pretty much the same as last year's Camry at around 3,500 pounds. The all-wheel drive model is likely going to be probably 100 pounds uh, heavier. But let's go ahead and close up this hood, which I wanted to point out, the hood is also very heavy and it also is supported by a prop rod as opposed to uh, struts. But let's go ahead and talk about the exterior styling. Now, first of all, uh, this one that I'm showing you is kind of like the hero model. It's the top of the line XSE painted in heavy metal, which is a new color for 2025. Uh, Toyota is gonna offer the Camry in four different trim levels, starting at the base LE, 
luxury oriented XLE, then there's the SE, which is the sporty, and then there's the XSE, which kind of throws in the luxury content of the XLE with the sportiness of the SE. You can see this vehicle is still built on the TNGA architecture, uh, which means the platform is basically the same. Toyota made a couple of tweaks to it, but the front end you can see uh, basically graphs the design that we first saw on the new Prius. So you can see the LED headlights, which are gonna be standard, have that unique kind of C shape to them where you have uh, twin LED projectors for the LED low and high beams. Uh, the daytime running light you can see is actually now an amber illumination, which is nice. Uh, it definitely gives it a more distinctive look. You also have the same kind of updated grill that Toyota first introduced on the Prius where it has kind of like this little mail slot. There's a nice little camera there for the front facing camera. This also houses the radar sensor uh, for the adaptive cruise. This vehicle does come standard with Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 which is their latest driver assist technology. I also like the way that this, this, all area, this whole area here is very like, flush mounted. It's just very uh, sleek in my eyes. And I also like the XSE's unique grill insert where it has kind of like a hexagonal body colored pattern. There's obviously still openings here because there's still an engine that requires cooling. There's also nice, nicely included parking sensors. And then I also saw uh, Toyota will offer an accessory where you can actually add from the dealer, I believe, an, an additional LED light strip along the lower fascia of the front bumper. Uh, this particular one that I'm showing you doesn't have it, obviously. There's also kind of like a front splitter with some kind of like side sill extensions that gives the XSE a more aggressive look. But let me know in the comment section below if you guys like the changes. I mean, I think um, this car still is instantly recognizable as a Camry, but the company certainly uh, kind of made it a little bit more Prius-like so it fits into their current crop of their latest hybrid vehicles. Now, being built off of the same TNGA-K architecture, the dimensions of this car are pretty much the same. You have the same 111.2 inch long wheelbase. They did increase the overall length by about an inch. It's now 193.5 inches long, which is still kind of right in the middle of the midsize family sedan uh, segment. You can see the wheels on this XSE trim. Uh, this is a gloss black 19 inch wheel with kind of like a double five spoke design. You have a 12 inch rotor at the front with a slightly smaller rotor at the back. You have an all independent suspension, no adaptive dampers on the Camry, uh, but you can see the tire is a 235 by 40 R19 Bridgestone. This is essentially the same size wheel and tire package as last year. Go for an XLE, you'll have like an 18 inch wheel. And I believe Toyota also puts a, six, a 17 inch wheel as standard on the base LE grade. Uh, and then you also have roughly just under five inches of ground clearance. Now, being that this is the XSE, you also have a, a two-tone roof. That's a unique feature on this trim. You can see you've got this midnight black painted roof, black painted side mirrors. These are also uh, integrated with the turn signals, which are LED, which is nice. And then you can also see here on the roof, there's also a panoramic sunroof. This is the first time that Toyota is offering a pano roof on the hybrid Camry. Previously, you had to go for a V6 or a four-cylinder gas-only version, but it's nice to see Toyota is including an available panel roof on this trim. There's no chrome along the window trim, which I very much appreciate. You can see the door handles. They look pretty much the same. The silhouette of the vehicle, in fact, from this angle, looks like the current generation Camry. So you can tell it's a very, you know, it's a redesign, but it's also kind of like a heavy refresh as well. Now looking at the rear of the vehicle, you can see the taillights have also been updated. I actually think the design kind of reminds me, I think I mentioned it in my first look video, a little bit of the previous generation Accord with the C shape to the LED taillight. The XSE also includes a black painted spoiler along with this kind of black line that kind of uh, goes across the trunk lid. Uh, there's uh, some new badging over here with the Beyond Zero badge that also has HEV for hybrid electric vehicle. If you had all-wheel drive, there'll also be a separate AWD badge here uh, to show that you have all-wheel drive. Um, the exhaust system, you can see there's just a single outlet with twin tips over here to the side. Toyota used to offer a quad outlet exhaust on the previous generation. Uh, clearly that's not the case anymore. The rear bumper is a little bit more aggressive on this vehicle, which I think people are gonna like, especially for the sportiness factor of the XSE and the SE. You can see opening up the trunk, there's a little button here to open that up. And you can see because it's essentially the same size, trunk capacity hasn't changed. You're looking at around 15.1 cubic feet of total storage space. Uh, which you can see is also very, very usable. The seats fold down in a 60-40 manner, uh, which is nice. If you also look underneath here, under the floor, you can see there is a temporary spare tire and a jack and all the necessary tools. So at least you don't have to deal with a fix-a-flat kit. So the exterior of the redesigned Camry is more of an evolutionary change versus the prior generation, but let's go ahead and talk about the interior of this vehicle because this one that I'm showing you here has the cockpit red interior. It's actually a fan favorite. Toyota says a lot of people really liked the interior, uh, but when you get inside, it has that typical low sedan step in height. And then as I shut the door, the door has a relatively solid sounding thunk. It actually sounds pretty similar to the last generation Camry that I showed you guys. Now here's the key fob for the vehicle. Uh, Toyota said pretty much every Camry is gonna include their push button start with intelligent access key. It has your usual buttons here for lock, unlock, open up the trunk and panic. Toyota also offers their phone as a key function. They call it digital key 
on the upper trims where you can pair your smartphone and you can actually use your phone to actually unlock and lock the car and start the vehicle up so you don't even need the key fob. Uh, when you wanna start the car up, you can see the start stop button is located here where you'd expect it to be. And because this is a hybrid, the vehicle just kind of whirs to life. There's no traditional starter noise. It just says ready in the instrument cluster and has the typical Toyota startup chime. Uh, and it's pretty similar, of course, to the previous generation in the sense that, you know, all the chimes and the noises and stuff, they all sound the same. Now, in terms of the tech, this is where the Camry got a pretty big upgrade. So if you guys are looking at an XSE or an XLE, they'll come standard with the fully digital 12.3 inch cluster. And then uh, this model here also comes standard with Toyota's latest uh, audio multimedia interface. So you have a 12.3 inch touchscreen display with wireless CarPlay named your audio. You can see my phone has already connected to it. And it's a nice uh, size upgrade, about 3.2 inches larger versus the previous generation Camry, which topped out at nine inches. This just to me looks a little bit better executed. And it also reminds me a lot of the interior that we saw in the new Toyota Crown. But before we, go, before we go into some of the tech stuff, let me talk about some of the materials. Now this XSE trim that I'm showing you, you can see has some pretty good high quality stuff. You can see the door panel has a soft touch injection molded plastic. I like the perforated red leather along the upper portion here. It's nice and padded where you'd rest your elbow uh, here on the armrest pad. The window controls, it's up one touch up down for the front and for the rear. So it's one touch for all four. Love that Toyota does that. This car doesn't have power folding mirrors. I would have expected them to include that at this price point. Uh, you have your mirror controls over here. And then the seat, the driver's seat here is a 10-way power adjustment with two-way uh, lumbar support. The, the passenger side is an eight-way power. If you guys are looking for memory seats, however, this XSE does not offer it. You have to go for an XLE that rolls in a two-person memory seat function. It's nice that Camry has it now because the previous generation, you couldn't even get that feature. It was reserved for Avalon or Crown, but now you can on the XL XLE trim. You can see the steering wheel. This is the same newer steering wheel that we saw on the Crown, for example, you can see on the XSE, you have some red stitching, contrast red stitching, which is nice. It's a three-spoke wheel. You have actual buttons here for your, your cruise control, the Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 with their pre-collision assist. There's the camera that watches your face to make sure that you're paying attention and you're not falling asleep. That's part of their driver monitoring system. You can see the, whole, or the steering wheel itself has a manual tilt telescoping arrangement. You get paddles on the wheel as well for this XSE grade to control the CVT transmission, the horn. It sounds pretty, you know, non-dis nondescript, but also appropriate. At least Toyota didn't put like a puny sounding horn like on the Corolla, for example. And then in terms of the rest of the dash, you can see the upper dash has a soft touch injection molded plastic. Uh, which extends over here. You can see there's a lot of piano black over here with this kind of like interesting raised texture. Now, I don't particularly love this design unless Toyota put some ambient lighting in here, which I'm gonna suspect they didn't. I'll have to wait until I get one back home uh, to look, take a look at it at night. This to me just shows fingerprints and smudges and scratches very easily. But again, they were trying to make the interior look a little bit more unique. You can see there's more of that cockpit red where it's actually leather and padded down here, which is nice. Your rear air vents, you can see have moved to this lower portion. You have dual zone automatic temperature control. There's also your three level heated and cooled seat function which is part of a premium package that my test car has as well, which also rolls in a 10 inch head up display that's included on that $4,000 premium package. Uh, I believe it's also an option on the XLE grade. If you guys are an audiophile, there's a nine speaker JBL sound system, which sounds okay. It's part of that premium package. So uh, you guys wanna tick that option box if you guys you know, wanna have uh, the good speakers. Down here in the center console, you can see there's three USB charging ports. There's two USB C's, a USB A, which you can connect your phone to that if you don't wanna use the car wireless function. That'll also connect your phone wire, well, via a wired connection. My iPhone 14 Pro Max fits nicely into this little compartment where it's wirelessly charging my phone. And Toyota's been using a new supplier, I believe, for their wireless chargers, because it actually works really well. Every Camry comes standard with a wireless phone charging pad, which is nice. The shifter looks like it's been pulled basically from the previous generation. It's a traditional shifter with PRND with a sport mode. Um, there's a sport mode here as well. And if you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's your backup camera with the full 360 camera with the panoramic view. That's included if you guys go for the premium plus package that my test car has. You can see the graphics and resolution is fine. It has trajectory, parking sensors. It's not quite as nice as what I've seen in like Toyota's 14 inch display. Uh, but you know, it's nice that you can still get, you know, that technology, although it is part of an option package on this model. You can see your drive mode selector is here. There's an eco, normal and a sport mode here. So if I start playing with the buttons here, you can see it even shows a little graphic uh, as it changes the drive modes here. Um, there's also an EV mode that allows you to essentially drive an electric only at very low speeds. Remember the battery in this car is only a one kilowatt hour lithium iron unit, which is a new battery this year. So it's not gonna give you that much electric only range, but it will give you some. You have an electronic parking brake here. The piano black plastic you can see just shows dust and fingerprints. So I don't love the way uh, this looks, but you have your cup holders, a little bit more storage over here nice and padded armrest area over here. And if you open this up, you can see it has a decent amount of storage. There's an actual 12 volt in here. 
uh, and it's relatively deep enough to hide a couple of items, which is nice. The above me here, you can see panoramic sunroof, which I love. You used to not be able to get that, remember, on the hybrid, but it's included on this trim. If you guys go for the premium plus package, you also have a woven material here, LED map lighting, uh, as well for the map lights. Uh, and then in terms of the seats, uh, this is kind of the re cockpit red leather interior with the heat and ventilation. The seats themselves have a much softer padding material to them. Toyota said they redesigned the seats, they hold you in place a little bit nicer, and the head restraint on this model is also a little bit softer. I complained about how hard the headrest was on the previous generation, so it's nice to see that Toyota has addressed that, and it should again improve uh, on-road comfort when you guys are taking those longer road trips. The glove compartment you can see here is a little bit on the small side. It's uh, got a lid that's damped, but not even felt it goes kind of into the dash. So in terms of overall, overall storage, the camera is certainly going to suffice. Like the way the center console looks, love, love the new screens, and I also love the red interior. Does it feel, you know, obviously luxurious? No, but if you guys have been inside the new Crown, this interior is going to feel awfully familiar. Now moving on to the back seat of the Camry, this is a mid-size family sedan, so obviously if you're looking at this car, you probably want it to have a good size back seat, and this is where Toyota essentially kept things the same as the previous generation. Remember, the wheelbase is the same 111.2 inches uh, in length. So you have around 38 inches of legroom back here, which 38 inches is certainly a very usable amount. This is not where I'd have the seat to drive, but you can see at 5'7", I have a good amount of foot space and legroom space. There is a hump here that intrudes on the middle passenger. It's not necessary given there's no actual physical drive shaft, so I'm most surprised Toyota kept that here. You can see you have rear seat air vents, which is nice. You have two USB charging ports, an A and a C. No heated rear seats back here, however, but you can see I can sit back here and cross my legs and be relatively comfortable. In terms of the materials, materials back here, it is a hard touch injection molded plastic, so it's been downgraded versus the front seat area. Some aluminum accents here, or they're fake silver painted accents. Nice and padded over here. I love the cockpit red, how it kind of extends over onto the door panel in the back still. And then looking at the uh, rest of the comfort features, you can see the head restraints. They do adjust back here, which I believe the old one, if I remember correctly, didn't have adjustable head restraints. Uh, if I fold this down, you can see there's an armrest with two cup holders. And overall, this is still a very usable amount, but I believe you're going to find more rear seat legroom in something like the Honda Accord. So kind of keep that in mind if you guys are looking for a family sedan with the biggest back seat. So here we are finally driving the redesigned Toyota Camry for 2025. Now, some of you may argue it's not a full redesign. I mean, sitting in this XSE model here with uh, which comes only as a hybrid, uh, this model that we're driving is the front wheel drive version, which means we have 225 horsepower. I'll see if we can hop into an all wheel drive later on and see if there's a noticeable difference in acceleration. But let's go ahead and see what we can get. Just a quick zero to 60 number here. I have it in sport mode now. We'll basically brake torque it. surprisingly quick, 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds. Now we are going slightly more downhill here, uh, but I was expecting this car to be faster because remember, compared to the previous generation Camry Hybrid, that only had 208 horsepower. Now we have 225, so it's a noticeable increase. And because the cars are essentially the same size and the same curb weight, we can pretty much expect it to be, you know, similar in that regard uh, compared to, you know, um, the acceleration because the curb weight's kind of similar. Let's go ahead and try another quick zero to 60 here because this road is a little more level ground or it actually it appears, appears a little more uphill, but let's just see the difference here. So we'll just floor it. Even out the times. I actually felt a little bit of torque steer there when I was pushing my, putting my foot down. 7.9 there, so yes, uh, a second difference, and if you average out the time, you're looking at around you know, 7.5 seconds, mid seven second range. So we'll wait until we get one back home to test for a full week and see how you know, that model is gonna feel out on our usual stretch. But I have to say the Camry, you know, hybrid, the XSE model, well, all of them come only as a hybrid. It, it feels good off the line. I mean, this car is built off of the TNGA K architecture and it has, you know, a sportier feel. I mean, this is definitely still one of the sportiest driving Camrys. I mean, the previous generation was, but this XSE has like a sport tuned suspension. The steering's a little bit more uh, sportier feeling and it just has good feedback. The suspension also stays nice and flat. It doesn't have much in terms of actual feel through the wheels and what the tire are doing but uh, this is definitely you know a lot sportier than you know any Camry before it just like on the previous generation as well the seats have also been updated on this model uh, Toyota actually says that they made the seats a little bit softer with especially with the head restraints 
Uh, the padding is also a little bit more plush. And overall, I'm just liking the way that this car feels. Um, if you guys prefer, you know, the feel and the seating position of a sedan, you know, there's plenty to like with this car because the uh, how low how low the vehicle rides. It also has that more sporty feel because I think with a lot of these uh, sedans. People, you know, everyone's buying crossovers nowadays. So, you know, people who actually want a sedan, you're gonna want something that's a little bit, you know, actually lower to the ground as opposed to sitting up high. And so I think Toyota did a pretty good job in that regard there. We were just testing out the uh, turning radius there. This model that we're driving has the 19 inch wheels and the ride quality in this Camry, I will say is definitely on the firmer side. I'll see if I can switch into like an XLE with all wheel drive later on. And we can see if there's a noticeable difference in the suspension, um, but, I think, you know, Toyota going all hybrid is, a, is kind of a gamble for them because as you guys know, Camry kind of sometimes people buy these for a price point, but now with the, you know, coming stand with the hybrid powertrain, they did drop the price slightly compared to the previous generation, but it is going to make this car a little bit more expensive. The one thing I've also really liked about Toyota's hybrid system is just the smoothness of it. Uh, as soon as you put your foot down, that electric motor torque kind of kicks in. Remember, there's two electric motors on this model, three if you guys go for the uh, all-wheel drive version. And the transition between the gas engine and the uh, the electric part and with the ECVT, it's just a very seamless one. And I also noticed the engine isn't quite as loud when it does come on and when you're pushing it like I used to remember on a lot of Toyota products. So I think Toyota has been working there with the sound insulation. Perhaps maybe the engine just doesn't rev as high as it used to. Uh, that could be something as well. This car doesn't actually have a tack, so we don't know, you know what it's actually revving out to, but put my foot down here. It definitely has enough torque to actually spin the tires. Uh, this front wheel drive model, you can feel a little bit of torque steer, uh, which, you know, the all wheel drive models should fix that. Remember, Toyota used to never offer all wheel drive with the hybrid Camry. So it's definitely, you know, a nice little touch. Visibility in this car also is pretty similar to the previous generation. I can see it out of the front really well. The sides, this pillar is a little bit thick, uh, but you can still see around it relatively well. The view out of the back also is good because this car doesn't have really any, any kind of like squared off or like, um, windows that are really small for the design, even though Toyota tried to go with a slightly more coupe profile, uh, I think they did a really good job. I mean, just kind of going up this here, here, hill accelerating, this car has honestly plenty of power. Now, is it going to you know, be a, a satisfactory replacement for those of you who are coming from the old V6 Camry? Probably not. I mean, the V6 Camry, if you guys you know, were able to get the traction down, it could do zero to 60 in like under six seconds. So clearly, you know, Toyota doesn't have a replacement for you on that engine. However, I do think that whenever the Lexus version of this car comes out, the ES, will likely offer the 2.4 liter turbo engine. That's just my hunch. We don't know until Lexus eventually reveals the ES. I suspect that'll give you the performance that you're looking for that'll probably make it way quicker versus the old V6 because we've tested that powertrain in other Toyota and Lexus products and it does a really good job. Uh, and then in terms of the fuel efficiency, this model that we're driving is rated at 47, 46 MPG. The, the all-wheel drive will drop it down to like 44, 43 if you guys go for the XSE. Uh, right now we're on this really short, brief media drive where you know, other journalists are kind of getting in it and it's only showing 28 MPG. So I'll have to wait until I get one back home to actually do a fuel economy test with it. But for those of you who, again, are looking about or thinking about trading in your old Camry, what you'll notice about the new one is it drives pretty similarly. It's a little bit more refined. It definitely has a lot more power. It's very smooth. I love the tech in the car with the big, you know, 12.3 inch display. And uh, it really just, I think, is going to satisfy, you know, the type of buyer who's looking for a Camry. But perhaps with the new styling, it may even uh, attract a slightly new buyer, especially one who prefers the sleekness and the low profile of a sedan as opposed to a crossover. So after having just jumped out of the front wheel drive version of the new Camry, we are now behind the wheel of the all wheel drive model, which adds about an extra seven horsepower. I know seven horsepower may not sound like a lot, but I think it's a really important addition because a lot of people really love the idea of having a hybrid vehicle, but they also want to be able to have the extra traction. And the old Camry only offered all wheel drive if you went for the naturally aspirated four cylinder, which honestly was a little bit gutless. So uh, I got 6.9 seconds on this same stretch in the front wheel drive model. Let's go ahead and see what we can get in the all wheel drive model here. We have it in sport mode here. We have it in sport for the uh, transmission as well. We'll brake torque it. Feels quick off the line and not any wheel spin at all because of that additional rear electric motor. 
6.4 seconds there. That's actually really impressive. That's about a half a second faster versus the same time that I did in the front wheel drive model on that same stretch of road. So very impressive performance there that I think most people are gonna really like. Now, obviously I am going slightly downhill there. There's like a 3% gradient downhill. So I'll have to wait until I can test one back home uh, to see what we can get. But you know what? This is actually the same stretch that I did another test where I got 7.9 in the front wheel drive model. Let's just try it here this time with the all wheel drive model. It's more uphill, we'll just floor it. Feels quick off the line. Love the instant torque that you get from the electric motor. Puts you right back in the seat nicely. 7.15 there, so that's about, Actually, that's showing, that's showing more of a level ground. So that was probably the case earlier as well when I was uh, doing the, the front wheel drive version. But I mean, 7.1 is pretty good and then around 7.5 for the front wheel drive model. So really in reality, the Camry with all wheel drive is likely going to be about a half a second faster zero to 60 wise, which I think should be good. I mean, obviously if you guys are com coming from the V6 Camry with its 301 horsepower V6, that one was around the low six seconds, maybe even the high five second mark. So clearly this is not going to be, you know, able to keep up with that. But remember this model that we're driving um, essentially is rated at 44 in the city, 43 on the highway. That's essentially double the MPG of the old, you know, V6 powered Camry. So that's a big improvement. I think a lot of people are going to be willing to sacrifice the added performance um, to get that, you know, significantly better fuel efficiency. And you're also getting the added traction because remember the old V6 with its eight speed auto, there was times where it struggled to put the power down and the eight speed wasn't always the best transmission. It was really slow to react and slow shifting. It was relatively smooth, but this CVT just, you know, is really quick and responsive. It puts the engine right in the meat of the power band. Uh, I'm driving it around now in sport mode. No adaptive dampers, but the all wheel drive model feels just as nimble and light as the front wheel drive model. So in reality, if you guys are looking at a Camry, you'd be you know, a fool to not consider the all wheel drive model. You get the additional performance along with the additional traction. And that's kind of the appeal with going for an all wheel drive version. I'll have to wait until I get one back home for a week, like I said, in my first driving part of the front drive model to you know, test out the fuel efficiency but I think that what Toyota has done here is they've just significantly improved the driving feel of the Camry and the hybrid model is now significantly improved in terms of acceleration, in terms of NVH, in terms of efficiency, and it's just you know a better all around powertrain in general versus the previous generation. So even though most Americans are obsessed with SUVs, Toyota sells a pretty good amount of Camrys uh, in the US every year. In fact, last year, the company did just under 300,000 sales, which again, makes this vehicle the best-selling mid-sized family car in America. So clearly, even though everyone's talk crazy about SUVs, the Camry is still a very important vehicle. So after spending some time driving the redesigned Camry, I mean, some of you may say that it's not really a redesign, it's kind of a heavy refresh. I'd argue that there's plenty of changes here to kind of make you think about trading in your old Camry. The hybrid-only powertrain, I think, is a bold move on Toyota's part. I think it might turn off a few people that are more price conscientious, but I love the fact that this has more power. As you guys saw, zero to 60 in the you know high sevens to low seven second mark is going to be you know plenty fast for most. It may not necessarily be as quick as the old V6 Camry, but the take rate of the V6 was just dropping. And plus the fuel efficiency of this car in the mid 40 MPG mark to the high 40s to even the low 50s, that's essentially almost Prius-like efficiency for a car that has a bigger back seat, that has a really nice sized trunk. It's a sleek looking sedan. This XSE version that I'm showing you here is essentially the halo model. I mean, a lot of people definitely love the two-tone roof combination, which is gonna cost you around 925 bucks if you guys want it. The back seat is essentially the same as the previous generation. The tech in this car is pretty much what you expect from Toyota. I love the fact that that 12.3 inch display is included on this trim. Most models will also have the fully digital display. This model here with the premium package, the premium plus package also includes things like the ventilated seats, the JBL sound, uh, the panoramic sunroof. I mean, really, this car in general is kind of going to be competing in a class that continues to shrink. I mean, yes, there's the Honda Accord, which also most Accords now are sold with the hybrid powertrain. There's the Nissan Altima, there's the Hyundai uh, Sonata, there's the Kia K5, which is just refreshed, but the segment continues to shrink. So I think by Toyota going with an all hybrid design, they're going to continue to dominate the segment, but by also adding all wheel drive to the hybrid powertrain that's going to again open up a new pool of buyers because if you guys are looking at like the Accord for example you can't get the hybrid version with all wheel drive you can't get any version of the Accord with all wheel drive if you're looking at an Altima you can't get all wheel drive uh, with the up engine the turbocharged engine it's only on the base engine the K5 does offer all wheel drive uh, but the Sonata I don't believe actually does offer all wheel drive so that's again giving the Camry an edge over its competitors now if you guys are looking to put one of these in your driveway they are heading to Toyota dealerships pretty much as we speak Toyota says basically 
specifically in the spring of this year, so most likely now. Um, pricing for the new Camry did go up, obviously. However, if you're comparing it to the hybrid of last year's model, this is where the Camry is actually about a couple hundred dollars cheaper because the base LE with front wheel drive starts at around $28,200. It's around 200 bucks less expensive versus last year's Camry. However, if you're comparing it to the gas only Camry, it's about $2,000 more. So again, that's where I think Toyota could lose a couple of buyers who are looking for the cheapest Camry possible and don't necessarily want the added tech of all wheel drive. If you guys want to go to an SE, it's typically going to cost you around $2,000 more. All wheel drive is around $1,500 more. This XSE front wheel drive that I'm showing you starts at around $34,600. So the pricing there is really not that much more versus the previous generation. My test car here, however, has a couple of options like that premium plus package that I mentioned for four grand. There's a thousand dollars almost for the two-tone paint color charge and then there's your, des your destination charge all in. This Camry here comes into just under $40,000, around 39.6. If you guys want all-wheel drive, you're gonna push it to over $41,000. So again, it makes the Camry still a great value. It is a little bit more expensive versus something like the Accord, but I'd argue with the additional power um, and the additional traction of all-wheel drive, it could be worth, you know, you know, that an edge over the Honda, but I'll have to wait until I get, you know, them both back to back to do kind of a full comparison test. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview here on the brand new 2025 Toyota Camry. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.